the death of Chilino Sanchez. A small piece of paper, no more than five centimeters tall, contained a message that would forever mark Chilino Sanchez's life, the king of corrido music. Despite repeated advice from his family and friends, who knew that his life was in danger if he returned to the stage in Culiacan, Chalino was not eager to go back to his homeland to continue singing. His career was taking off and becoming increasingly known, not only in Mexico, but also in the United States. However, this growing fame gave him a false sense of security, despite the warnings. Chalino didn't hesitate, dressed up, put on his hat, and took the stage at Bougainvillas Hall in Culiacan on the night of May 15, 1992. He was proud of what he did and had much to say, but that small piece of paper contained a death threat, and what happened that night would change his life forever. During his last live concert, after singing the song Alma Enamorada, Chilino Sanchez received a message on a piece of paper that turned out to be a death threat. After the performance, Chilino informed his team about the message, and they advised him to stay isolated for the rest of the night. However, in the early morning of the next day, the van Chalino was traveling in was intercepted by a group of men identifying themselves as government federal agents. When Chalino opened the van door, the men claimed they didn't find any narcotics. Chalino didn't deny involvement and mentioned he had just finished a concert. The men then asked him to accompany them to speak with a superior. Chalino accepted, but sadly that was the last time he was seen alive. Let me share with you details about the tragic ending of Chalino Sanchez that you may not know. There are many versions of who is responsible for the physical disappearance of the Corrido King. Rosalinda Sanchez Felix was born on August 30, 1966, in Rancho del Guayabo, Sinaloa, and grew up in a large and poor family. Her parents were Santos Sanchez and Miss Felix, and she had nine siblings. At six years old, Chalino did not suffer the loss of his father, and as a young undocumented child, she crossed the border into Baja, California in search of a better future. There, he began working in the fields of Coachella and other odd jobs. One version suggests that Chalino did not leave Mexico because he would have taken justice into his own hands and shot a man who allegedly crossed the line with his sister. However, this is not the only version circulating about his departure from Mexico. In an interview, Chalino Sanchez said, If I owe something, I owe something like that, that something happened to his sister. After crossing the border into the United States, Chalino's life did not seem to take a better turn. However, a significant loss would shake his apparent tranquility. The death of his brother Armando in a Tijuana hotel in 1984, after being betrayed by his best friend. This painful event led Chalino to write song lyrics that he would later sing in his brother's memory. In fact, Chalino dedicated three well-known corridos to his brother during the eight months he was imprisoned at the Mesa Penitentiary in Tijuana for crimes such as drug trafficking and collaborating in the entry of illegal immigrants across the border. Chalino Sanchez intensified his desire to experience his own emotions and experiences. The experiences of his fellow inmates were undoubtedly his inspiration for his corridos, combined with the impressive ease that young Chalino had in writing them. According to his wife Maricela, the true inspiration for the corrido king came in the illuminating solitude of the bathroom. He could spend a whole hour locked in there and only come out when he had finished his new corrido. After his release from prison, this practice began to yield financial rewards as people started hearing about his writings and began paying him in cash to transfer his experiences to songs and perform them. In addition to cash payments, Chalino Sanchez received other forms of payment for his work, such as clothing, vehicles, and even weapons. Shortly after leaving prison, he married Maricela Vallejo Bolaños in a humble and somewhat hasty ceremony as the young woman was expecting their first child. Together they had two children, Cynthia Sanchez Vallejo and Adan Chalino Sanchez Vallejo, who died under suspicious circumstances at the age of 19 in 2004 due to a supposed car accident. When singer-songwriter Angel Para heard the young Chilean, he recognized his potential and immediately took him to his studio, where he recorded his first cassette demo with the Norteño group Los de la Frontera. By the end of the 1980s, work was piling up for Chalino, who was already well-known in California, and many competed for his performances. His characteristic off-key voice and the rawness of his lyrics made him unique. Chalino Sanchez's popularity exploded after being targeted in an attack during a concert at Plaza Los Arcos in Coachella on January 24, 1992. During the performance, Edward Alvarado Gallegos, brandishing a weapon, did not hesitate to shoot at Chalino, who defended himself using his own weapon that he always carried in his belt. During his performances, Chalino even hey, threw his weapon in the attacker's face while fleeing injured. 
one person died during the confrontation, and eight others were seriously injured. Before the man was subdued, the assailant was taken to prison and Cellino was hospitalized fighting for his life. After recovering, Cellino became a legend, selling out tickets for numerous performances throughout California. The incident was first broadcast on Radio Furiosas, especially his love songs like La Prenda del Alma or Nieve de Enero. However, just four months after the attack, Cellino's end was drawing near. After the shooting, Cellino decided to give away his weapons, sold the rights to his songs, and with the money obtained, bought a home for his family. Despite the warnings from his friends, Chalino Sanchez decided to perform at Bougainvilles Hall in Culiacan, Sinaloa, where he had been offered $20,000 for a single performance. He took the stage accompanied by five backup singers and his musicians. Two friendly people from the north. The dance continued and the hall was full. Chalino did not seem happy with the development of the show, but everything changed when he received a paper with a death threat. At the end of the performance, Chalino did not get into his van with his friends and one of his brothers. But on the way, they were intercepted by a van with armed men at the intersection of Insurgentes and Madero Avenues. The other vehicle's lights were flickering, so Cellino decided to deviate, but it was in vain. When they reached Glorieta, two men identified themselves as police officers and asked him to accompany them to speak with their superiors. Cellino had no choice but to comply with the request without knowing that he was signing his death sentence. The next morning on May 16, 1992, Farmers found the lifeless body of the singer in an irrigation canal on the outskirts of Culiacan. He had two gunshot wounds to the back of the head and clear signs of being severely beaten. His body could only be identified by a tattoo, but authorities never clarified what really happened to the Corrido King. Although more than three decades have passed, no one has been prosecuted for his death. A supposed key witness appeared, claiming to have witnessed the moment when Chalino was forcibly taken into a suburban. However, this has not been enough to solve the case, which continues in secrecy and somewhat forgotten by justice. Today, a small chapel stands in his honor, although his remains do not rest there. Chalino Sanchez's fame spread exponentially on both sides of the border, and many have decided to imitate his style to keep his memory alive. In conclusion, Chalino Sanchez's life was full of ups and downs from his humble origins in Sinaloa to his rise to fame as the King of Corridos. Despite his success, his career was marked by cruelty and tragedy from the attack he suffered at his concert to the tragic end at the hands of his killers. However, his musical legacy lives on and continues to inspire new generations. If you enjoyed this video, I invite you to leave your opinion in the comments and give it a like to support this content. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos about the life and work of these victims or perpetrators. Until next time.